gonna look worse if we stay out here. Come on. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it.
structure is completely destroyed. Over. Hold on. I'm seeing something. It looks like there are survivors. Let's pick them up. He attacked you. He saved my life. And I watched him die. I heard Jessica. I don't know how or why she was down there, but I know I heard her. He held it right up to my face. Right here, right in front of my nose, and he could have shot me. He almost shot me, the prick. I mean, you go out with a guy for however long and you think you know him, but man, this one really takes the cake. I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. He was out of his fucking mind. He wanted to hurt us. Okay? And... I thought he was the one who attacked Jess. I thought we were close. After his sister's disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. Why did you hit Josh? He was acting like a maniac, and I... I had to stop him. I thought you said he was tied up. Yeah, but... Okay, all right. Okay. I know it looks bad. But you don't understand. He was trying to fuck with our heads. I... I stabbed him, and I tried to get away, but I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. Didn't know? Who did you stab? Oh, I, I, I stabbed the maniac. I didn't know it was Josh, but then he was the psycho. And how was I supposed to know Josh had all the sauce and the gun? And oh, my God. Where's Matt? Is he okay? Are they done looking at him? I'm just a little worried because, you know, I'm his girlfriend. Did he tell you that? I mean, I probably wasn't his favorite person there for a couple minutes, but he knows how devoted I am to him. He knows. He, he said he knows, right? You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there. And I'd give anything to unsee it.
there's no key for the cable car. Josh, he's gotta have it. No, he's gone. We're too late. Shh, quiet. It may have taken him down to the mine. Wait! Don't no move. Holy shit! What the? Ah! I'm gonna get that key right from that thing's goddamn bedroom, and then I'm gonna get us all the hell out of here. Holy shit! Whoa! Let's find a way down to where this fucker lives. I wonder how much these sessions are of any help to you now. Just won't listen to me and think seems pretty... Fucked up. Mm -hmm. So I I'm gonna leave you now, Josh. It's time you learn. There's more to be afraid of can be dreamt up by the unhinged imagination of a self-indulgent, spoiled little brat! You had so many people who cared about you, who were willing to help! But at every turn, you choose to push them away, and now you're all alone. Though by the sounds of things, you won't be alone for long. No, you won't be alone for long. Deep breaths, Josh. Deep breath. Tell me what to do. 
You can't tell me what to do anymore. I'm going to run out for Josh. Okay. Okay. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You're all alone down there. No. No, 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 not again. All alone. But you're with us now. Family. Get away from me! Get away! Why didn't you save us, Josh? Why did you want us to die? I didn't want you to die. I swear. This is Beth. This is her watch. What? Let me see. Look. There was a cross here. So this is where she was buried. But... Who dug her up? Let's keep moving.
but it's okay. You sure? I'm not dead yet. Famous last words. Oh, it's freezing. Yeah. Hit me with my fingers. survive anymore. If someone finds this, I'm sorry. I had to. I had no choice. What does it mean? Jesus. fall. So what? What does that mean? So Hannah must have buried her. God damn it. God damn it. Hannah was down here. I don't believe any of this. She would have been starving. She would have been desperate. Fuck! We need to find Josh. Right now. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I 
Scheiße, was haben Tripping or something. Josh! M Mike. Josh! Hey, man. Oh, don't, don't hit me, please. please. Well, you would be in it, man. Full mental jacket. We didn't think we'd get you back. Josh. Hannah was down here. <laughs> Mike. Hey, let's just get the fuck out of here. Okay. Josh, do you have the key for the cable car? Uh, yeah. Here. Oh, God. You see that over there? That means there's a direct way out. Come on. <laughs> there's no way Josh is going to make it up there. Okay. If you help me up, I can go back to tell the others we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. You bring Josh back the way we came, and we'll all meet at the lodge. Be careful. Yeah, you too. All right, let's go. You fucked up, son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry about before, man. I, I thought you killed Jess. I was wrong. Jesus, 
Chess? What the hell happened to you? How the fuck are you still alive? Yeah. Jess, I'm, I, I need to tell you something, and I don't want to freak you out, but there's, there's some kind of thing on the mountain. It's not human. It's like a monster. It came after me. It, Jess. It fucking pulled me down here into this fucking nightmare. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't freak out, please. Oh, God. Can you move? Yeah. Come on, Jess. Look at that. Some sort of cave in here. That was me. What? I fell through that roof. You fell this far? Jesus. It makes two of us. What? I fell off a goddamn fire tower down here. You're kidding me.
if we stay out here. Come on. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it. Oh! Go, go, go! Oh! 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 Oh!
structure is completely destroyed. Over. Hold on. I'm seeing something. It looks like there are survivors. Let's pick them up. saved my life and I watched him die I heard Jessica I don't know how or why she was down there but I know I heard her he held it right up to my face right here right in front of my nose and he could have shot me he almost shot me the prick I mean you go out with a guy for however long and you think you know him but man this one really takes the cake I was right there, and I could have done something. I tried to do something. It wasn't good enough. How did you end up in the mines? I was carried and taken and... What did you see? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He was out of his fucking mind. He wanted to hurt us. Okay? And... I thought he was the one who attacked Jess. I thought we were close. After his sisters disappeared, he'd come and talk to me. He said I was the only one who understood him. I thought... I thought we had a connection. If you need someone to talk to... I'm fine. Sometimes, after a traumatic experience... I said I'm fine. Why did you hit Josh? He was acting like a maniac, and I... I had to stop him. I thought you said he was tied up. Yeah, but... Okay, all right. Okay. I know it looks bad. But you don't understand. He was trying to fuck with our heads. I... I stabbed him, and I tried to get away, but I didn't know. I swear I didn't know. Didn't know? Who did you stab? Oh, I, I, I stabbed the maniac. I didn't know it was Josh, but then he was the psycho. And how was I supposed to know Josh had all the sauce and the gun? And oh my God. Where's Matt? Is he okay? Are they done looking at him? I'm just a little worried because, you know, I'm his girlfriend. Did he tell you that? I mean, I probably wasn't his favorite person there for a couple minutes, but he knows how devoted I am to him. He knows. He, he said he knows, right? Your friend Ashley, she told us she tried to help you. <sighs> she said she heard you calling out. <sighs> Not me. Mike. What do you remember? He came for me. He did. Came for you? Where is he? Did he make it? You need to listen to me. I don't care if you believe me or not. It doesn't matter because you will. You need to go down to the mines. What's in the mines, Sam? I've seen what's down there, and I'd give anything to unsee it.
visual on a survivor. One survivor per piece. Is that? Oh, fuck! Stay back! Stay back! No, no! Stay back! <laughs> I am Hayden Penetier, and we are here at the studio recording Until Dawn. My name is Rami Malik, and I play Josh. My name is Megan Martin. My name is Brett Dalton. My name is Antonella Lentini, and I played Hannah and Beth. My name is Jordan Fisher, and I play the character Matthew, Matt for short. I'm Nicole Bloom, and I play Emily in the game. My name is Noah Fleiss. I am Galadriel Steinman, and I play Ashley. So, Until Dawn is a story of eight teenagers who uh, revisit this cabin in the woods about a year later after a, a really traumatic experience where I've lost two of my sisters, so coming to kind of get some closure in that respect. One of the things that Larry does really well is make these multi-layered characters, and I think for just the story in general, it's, it follows the quintessential horror film plot lines, but the characters are so unique in themselves, and I think that's very cool. Oh, I hope this was the right thing to do. What? You know, getting everyone together on the anniversary. I mean, Josh seemed really pumped about us all doing something, didn't he? Yeah, no, he definitely did. I haven't seen him so excited about something in forever. Good, good. Sam, Sam and I have uh, a few things in common, such as being huge lovers of animals and she's a huge animal lover she's vegan she um, she is a pacifist I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna go as far as saying that I'm a pacifist but uh, she's spunky and cool I know that she I think is is made fun of a little bit by the rest of them who who think that her morals and her beliefs in that area are a little ridiculous and they don't agree with them but she doesn't care it doesn't stop her from being herself and that's something that i hope i have in common with her you know he definitely uh can be depressed at some times and a bit of a loner but he, he takes some solace in one of his sister's friends sam played by hayden penetere and uh invites everybody back to the same house the next year to kind of find some closure. Jessica is, she has a whole lot of personality. She is definitely the sort of mean girl character that, you know, at school she, she knows she's pretty, she knows that boys like her and she's gonna use it to her advantage. He's got a big heart and you can tell that that's very evident, especially how he treats his girlfriend, Emily. And, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a meathead, but in the best way possible. She really knows what she wants and she manages to to get that from whomever it is, whether it be Matt or Mike, you know, she's really driven and I can definitely relate to that. My, my character is uh, Chris and he is uh, what society might consider the nerd of the group um, and, and he kind of embraces it. Um, Ashley is, she's a little more serious than some of the other girls. Um, she's definitely very intelligent and, and thoughtful. She kind of looks at the whole big picture of things. She's not quite as geeky as Chris, but they connect in a lot of ways. Mike is like big guy on campus. He's uh, the class president who has some charm and has, has a brain. And I, I don't know, people seem to like Mike. He gets away with a lot, though. He's, he can be kind of kind of jerky. The fact that he, he really just kind of wants everyone to be happy when he wants for he's, he's a people pleaser and um, it's, I can I can definitely attest to being you know that guy. I'm, I'm always the friend that wants everybody to be happy and wants everybody to be taken care of and that's definitely that. But also like this character is just so fun. I rarely get to play the bitch and so it was really it was really fun to do that. The spirit of things, seriously, what's wrong with you? I'm just trying to lighten the mood, Em. Don't be like that. Like what? 
the way you're being. You always get like this. I just think this is just the coolest thing to be a part of, and um, I just think it's going to take the world by storm. I really do. I think this genre is the wave of the future, and I think that um, once people see the potential behind it uh, of getting to interact with the drama that you're witnessing unfold um, in such a realistic way, um, that this this is how entertainment's going to be from now on. Until Dawn is a game that's full of horror and one of the things we decided to do early on was to take a scientific approach to how scary it was. So we did experiments on people and we measured their responses to the game. We've created a test area, it's as close to a home setup as we can get it. We've recruited ordinary people to play the game and we've left them to play it on their own. The only difference is it's rigged with cameras and microphones that relay the data through to the next room where people are watching them play. <laughs> Bracelet here, we use for biometric testing. It measures the player's emotional response. It's called a galvanic response sensor. It makes contact with the user's skin and it measures the electrical conductivity across their skin. It's the same principle as an old-fashioned lie detector. When you're, when you're stressed, you sweat a little, very sensitive, and picks up tiny changes if the player is feeling anxious or scared. That data is fed back to a testing team, it comes through as a graph. no point testing one or two people you have to test a lot of people and watch your step when we have a scare that's consistently has a measurable emotional response then we knew it was good if it didn't have that it goes back to the team for improvement the data doesn't tell us what's wrong with the scare it only tells us if it's working or not right okay so you hear that too right josh here what? we have a chapter relatively early in the game weirdly right not, not, nothing regular about it. We have to create tension and anxiety in the player so they are ready to, to receive the scare. the player time to recover, to cool down, to calm down and then start building the tension again bef before we do the next scare. Hey. Uh, what? Hey. What the hell? Who? You just got mucked. <laughs> Yeah, it's such an adrenaline high when There's two things we found. One, one is we could look at the scares, analyse if our expected scares were working effectively. Were people shrieking and covering their hands or were they getting an emotional response from it? And being scientific about it means that we strip out people's opinions about whether things are working or not. We've got data and we look at the data. If it's working, we're happy with it. Really scary. <laughs> but scared and wanting to get away. <laughs> um, I actually made, made a bit scared to play on my own, but... <laughs> In a room with the lights on, yeah, with some other people as well. Yeah, maybe. But because I'm a scaredy cat, I would play with someone in the room. <laughs> and the lights on. It was one of the scariest games I've played in a long while. Go on, move. Let me say what I came to say. I'm here to tell you what you're up against being back on this mountain. You should never have returned. I don't know why you did after what happened last year. You mean with Hannah and Beth? Yeah, how could you know without being involved? 
I don't take kindly to you kids coming up here to my mountain. Your mountain? The mountain don't belong to me, it's true. But it don't belong to the Washingtons. This mountain belongs to the Wendigo. Hi, this is Lee Robinson, production designer at Supermassive Games. Understanding the ancient myths of the Wendigo was key for their development that helped the visual look. Through sketches and concepts, these elements were visualized, such as eyes being milky, almost dead, with loss of lips and eyelids due to frostbite, fangs growing and arms and legs getting longer, with skin hardening and thickening to look snarling and menacing, yet withered and lean. What the hell was that? Another fucking piece of... Fingers and toenails extending like claws, allowing them to climb effortlessly. We made them look gaunt and weathered, and having ragged remains of clothes they wore, Bloodstained and rotten, with patches of hair still remaining, they retained strong skeletal limbs, which enabled them to be agile and quick through the environment. Where are you? My name is Jamie Gallopo, animation director at Supermassive. The overall direction on the creature was to be very strong, to be extremely fast. We wanted a spider-like movement to the creature. One minute scampering, to leaping and then crawling. Almost instantaneous. And finally we wanted the creature to have this real uncontrollable thirst for flesh. From a sound design perspective, the Wendigo is a real challenge. For the main vocalisations of the Wendigo, we used our own vocalisations, various different animals from the exotic to the farmyard, various uh, plugins and processes to gel these sounds together and keep a human resonance behind that voice, telling the backstory of the Wendigo. Ah! During the chase sequences, the anger of the Wendigo is felt by encircling breaths, screams and screeches um, that uh, essentially chase you as you're being chased by the Wendigo. <laughs> Uh, layer them up in a multitude of layers, sometimes 15, 20 sounds playing at the same time, to build up the vocalizations for this fearsome creature which is always in attack mode, hyperactive, and chasing you throughout the game. America's Northwoods border region. Within this land of 10,000 lakes and miles of dense timber, a hideous creature is believed to lurk. The Northwoods is probably one of the last frontiers in America. There's still a lot of places in, in this area that hasn't been set foot by man. Monsters and mysteries exist here because it is remote. Up in the North Woods, winters are long. In times of biting cold and isolation, a devouring monster is believed to come forth. It's terrorized native people for generations. Growing up, I was told, like, don't go outside, the wind to go will get you. Among the traditions of the Northern Algonquin tribes, is the Wendigo, a monster that can seize hold of a person to carry out its hunger for human flesh. Many Native Americans fear even talking about this Wendigo, and even the mention of the name will let the Wendigo find out where you are, and it will open you up to be possessed by this Wendigo. The most famous case of a Wendigo possession took place in 1879 in the deep woods outside of Edmonton, Alberta. 